start this. Yours is on. So that's all done. And we're recording there. That's fine. What do I move it on? Or? We move it on with this. This one goes like that. Oh, yeah. So left and right. Lovely. And um, if you just keep it on your chin, just here. Yeah. That'd be great. Okay. Um, our next speaker is a man you know very well, a man close to my heart. Michael Gerard Gleeson, chairman of the Gleeson clan gathering, and he's been an enthusiastic genealogist for many years. His mother's family also Gleeson hails from Tinerana in the Silvermines parish and is considered to have a lineage going back to at least 700 years in the ancient Odlissen uh, Lysane territory. Michael's father's family lived in the parish of Lisboni near Nina, and Michael will be talking to us about Dr. Edward M. Gleeson of Kilcolman, Athlone. So please give a warm welcome to Michael. Thank you. Thank you very much, Morris. Um, many years ago, when I was very small, I remember maybe I was, uh, my first bicycle, I remember going off one Sunday and um, I used to visit old church ruins, castles, and graveyards. I remember going into Monsey Graveyard, and um, the, one of the first headstones inside the gate was listed on it, I think from memory now I'm quoting, Sacred to the memory of Mick Gleeson of Kilcoleman and his wife Margaret Maloney of Ballycahan, Limerick. And um, the dates were given when they died and so forth, erected by his son, Dr. Edward uh, Gleeson, Nutsford, and Patrick Gleeson, Dublin. So that memory often stuck in my mind. I thought I was the first Michael Gleeson in Kilcoleman, but obviously not. And then as years went by, um, and I got interested in history, um, I, I investigated it further, uh, met descendants of, of um, this Michael Gleeson. So, um, I've done a lot of research. Uh, I, about five years ago, I happened to be uh, came into possession of some letters written by uh, a daughter of this Michael Gleeson, Honora, to, as it happened, to a great granduncle of mine, a James Maloney, in America, and she addresses him as her dear cousin. So um, we we'll go through the life of. Um, of this, this man. He was uh, born in Kilcolman on the 24th of December 1815 and he died in August 1895. Now, Kilcolman is just out the road a short distance, situated in the barony of Oni and Ara, literally means St. Coleman's Church or the Church of St. Coleman. It consists of 342 acres, um, 190 of it is in the Yahalara parish and 152, which is the lower part there, is in the Burgess parish, even though they're both the one parish. Um, so um, this, is in, in, this is taken from the Arnold Survey map of the 1820s. Uh, the big um, landowner in Kilcolman was the Finch family. They were descended from a Simon Finch that came over with Cromwell. And it, in payment, they took possession of lands that were belonging to the Mackie Brain family of Ara, the Great O'Brien family. And the castle is still there on that property, what remains of the O'Brien castle. So Finch built a fine house uh, 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 just in front of the castle. Uh, beautiful view looking in towards Nina here. And um, from that map, there are very few other houses on that townland, with the exception of, you'll see up in the corner there, this long house here, and this farm here. This was the farm now where Dr. Edward Maloney Gleeson was born which was owned by his father. It consisted of and was that acreage up until 20 or 30 years ago until my brother expanded it. 43 acres, one road and 28 perch. Um, it was a long, it, it was quite a substantial house for his era. Um, we'll come to that later. 
This is the, the, uh, an extract from the marriage register of Michael Gleeson and Margaret Maloney. I go closer to it. It says there, on the, it was 12th of January 1815. Edwardus X. Michael Gleeson uh, and Mar uh, Margarita Maloney, Ippo Edmund, and I can't make out that. I always thought she was Margaret Maloney. So it's basically Michael Gleeson and Margaret Maloney. Michael Gleeson, son of Edward Gleeson, and, and uh, Margaret Maloney. Is it Anastasia? Or? Yeah. Well, I always thought he, he, his mother was Margaret Maloney, but this is the, this is the, <laughs> the marriage register of his parents. Huh? Is it? Who oh, is it? Sorry, maybe I have the wrong one. So, but anyhow, that's my. Sorry about that. Um, this is the family history. Um, we do, do we have a pointer? Or? It's on the um, sticker. What way does it work? It's just that red button. There. That red button. Yeah. Oh yeah. I got some of this information only recently. I only had. Um, I see how we work here. I had that information from the headstone and that information. And to the good, to the good office of Patrick Kelly here, Beatrice's uh, dad, I got access to Evelyn Gleason's papers. And there was some good background information. And you will see there where an Edmund Gleason of Kilcoleman, he seemed to own quite an amount of land. I always thought at that time that you had the landlords which owned it all the land and then you had the poor peasant Irish. But seemingly this Edmund Gleeson had quite a number of properties, probably only leased, uh, I wouldn't think he owned them, at Grala, Monsee, Newtown, Nye, Kilcoleman, and he had turbary rights, or the rights to cut turf for winter fuel in Carrigatoho Bob. And he married a lady called uh, Mary Grace Flannery. She was a widow. And she was originally Kennedy from Calm. And I think you might have heard that Calm mentioned already uh, today. Calm and Palace, uh, they're, ba further, they're back towards the back of Port Rue. So their son was Michael Gleason and married Margaret Maloney in Ballycahan in Limerick. And Margaret's parents were, were um, Edward, Edward Maloney. Believe, I understand he was a wine merchant and importer. And Margaret, they were, they were married, uh, Michael and, and Margaret were married on the 12th of the 1st, 1815. Their eldest son, you'll see there, is Dr. Edward Maloney Gleason, the man that's the subject of this talk. Uh, there was two uh, ladies who remained in Kilcolman. Uh, they were known as the Miss Gleasons. My mother, when she was young, knew people uh, who remembered them well. They were known as the Miss Gleasons, uh, Ellen Gleason and Anne Gleason. Uh, Anne, I think, died in about 18... 97 and, and Ellen lived on to 1904. Uh, I, I've heard it said that they both taught the future Bishop of Killaloo, Michael Fogarty, Latin and Greek. Now Michael Fogarty was bo born in the next farm in 1849 and he ruled the diocese of Killaloo with an iron fist I might say for 51 years. He died in his 97th year in 1955, and um, there was a young, uh, a young uh, sister that died at nine. You had Patrick then, he was a businessman in Dublin, uh, in Thomas Street. He built a, a Victorian house out in, in Glenageary. He named it Kilcoleman House. It's now, it had been demolished and the area there now where the new development is, is known as Kilcolman Court. You, you had William, who studied for the priesthood in Paris and Bordeaux, and was ordained a priest for the Diocese of Buffalo. 
and uh, ended up as Monsignor and Vicar General of the Diocese of Buffalo. I got some small bit of papers from, from the archivist in that diocese and a photograph of him there some time ago. And you had a sister, this is a sister who was writing to my um, great grand uncle, Honora Mary. She afterwards married Patrick Stevens of Boris Cain, and their daughter married Bertie Gill. And that's how they were connected with the Gill family. T.P. Gill, Bertie's brother, was the first secretary to the Department of Agriculture for about 1900 to 1926. Actually, he was the only secretary of an all-Ireland Department of Agriculture because, as we know, after 1922, the um, departments were divided up. So uh, I've, list, I've listed um, Michael's family there, Evelyn, which we had an excellent talk already about, uh, James, who was killed uh, in, in uh, India, um, Agnes, who married Robert Smith, Constant, who married Frank McCormack, and, and whose um, daughters worked with Evelyn in Dunamur, um, Ethel Gleason, whose Descendants are here today in the, in the persons of Patrick Kelly and, and Beatrice. Gerald Gleason, who um, yeah, uh, continued the line and, and bought Tinerana House outside Killaloo, and um, Grace Gleason. So that's uh, the family as I could establish it. Now, I may be wrong in some of it, but anyhow. Now, that's the wedding dress. From January 1815, it was up to, uh, maybe still is, that's two years ago I seen it, it's on display in uh, Collins Barracks Museum in Dublin, just down from Houston Station. That is uh, a portrait or a silhouette of Margaret Maloney Gleeson, taken about 1830. Now if you notice the way they spell Maloney, M-O-L-O-N-Y, um, most people, it's M-O-L-O-N-E-Y, and that was the same way as my great-grandmother, Margaret Maloney, who married my, my great-grandfather, Matthew Lees, and that's the way they spelt it, even though the family now spell it differently. That was the family home at Kilcolman, as we knew it now. Um, it was originally, at the time of um, Dr. Gleeson's uh, birth or his young days, it was a, uh, the two-story part didn't exist. It was a long thatched house and they, they built uh, a two-story, they built a room to the back 18 feet by, it's our kitchen now, it's 18 feet by about 16 and a big bedroom over it and another bedroom to the front. So it, it was quite a comfortable house for, for the early 1800s. That was a painting um, I had done some years ago for my mother, uh, and that was the colour. I remember that colour. We uh, that the house existed like that up to the, about the mid 1960s, when the thatch started um, giving way and the roof started um, basically collapsing, and, and we had to change it. The barn, uh, the little red door next to it was where the workman used to live. We, we called it the bicycle house. We used it for putting our bicycles in, and the barn was further down. Um, that is a description of the house uh, taken from the records of about 1840 or 50. I think I got them in the Torres Library. It was 62 feet long, 20 feet wide, 8 foot 6 high. Um, I forget what the figures in the front in the front row there. Um, I, I, lost the, I lost the index that they came with. So it was a substantial house. I, I was looking at the records of some houses in the neighbourhood and they were maybe only 10 or 12 feet wide and maybe 20 to 30 feet long. So it was quite a, a comfortable property at the time for, for the early 1800s. So um, this is the marriage settlement of Michael Gleeson and, 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 and part of it actually is it's quite a long document. Um, Margaret, Lee, or Ma Ma um, Margaret Maloney and Michael Gleeson. Whereas marriage is intended and shortly to be solemnized between the said Michael Gleeson and the said Margaret Maloney in consideration of the said intended marriage, the sum of £500 to be paid to the said Michael Gleeson by the said Edmund Maloney, this was the father-in-law, 
as the marriage portion of his daughter, the intended wife of the said Mike Gleeson. Also in consideration, the sum of £738.26 agreed to be paid by the said Edmund Gleeson, that was his father, to the said Mike Gleeson to promote and provide for him in life, in addition to the said lands and premises therein before agreed to be assigned to the use and benefit of the said Michael Gleeson. So that's a considerable, a considerable agreement in, in, in January 1815. That was a photograph of Patrick Gleeson there, the man with the cap, uh, his brother, at their house in, in Kilcorman House in Glenageary and his family, taken in the early 1900s. He was the last of the family to die. I think he died in 1909. That was Monsignor Gleeson, the man that ended up in Buffalo. I see he spelled the late Reverend W is E E. Now we get back to the to personal issue. Edward Maloney Gleason. In his early years he attended a classical school at Limerick. Then he went on to Peter Street Hospital, the University of Dublin, and the College of Surgeons in Dublin, qualified as a doctor of medicine, then went to London attended the University of London, qualified as a sur in surgery and dentistry. He then purchased a practice in Nutsport in Cheshire. He became a medical officer of the workhouse there. His practice continued from 1841 to 1863 in Nutsport. In 1854, he married Harriet Simpson, uh, whose father was uh, uh, an iron master of Woolfeed, Bury, north, is north of Manchester. In 1860, he was appointed honorary assistant surgeon to the Nutsford Volunteer Rifle Corps. That is um, the marriage uh, certificate. I see his father in law was meant, uh, is listed there as an iron founder. But strange enough, his own father, Mike Gleason, Back in Kilcolman is, is listed as a gentleman. So, um, in 1856, he was travelling in Ireland with his brother-in-law James Simpson. Uh, Beatrice touched on this already. He was intending to travel to Tipperary, and they stopped in Athlone, and they stood on the bridge in Athlone. It was market day in Athlone, and. He, he remarked on, on the natural resources of the area, uh, the River Shannon, uh, the resources that was uh, uh, available by utilising the Shannon, the railway, uh, there was a double railway line, the canal was there, there was a canal there, and the ready supply of wool. So, um, while he was in England, he, he was always attached to Ireland. Uh, like, like his daughter Evelyn afterwards, he never forgot his roots, his Irishness. He was a great friend and counsellor to, to many of the Irish labourers and harvestmen who used to come across to the UK uh, for harvest time. He wrote letters for them, he changed money for them. He arranged that mass would be said in a schoolroom of a Sunday, so as they wouldn't lose the religion. And he was always struck by the great contrast of the poverty there was in Ireland. And uh, remember, this wasn't long after the Great Famine here. And he was living in England where the Industrial Revolution was going on, uh, and where there was plenty of employment, plenty of work. And he, he, while he was always fascinated by machinery as well. And he made and invented a, a number of, of mechanised utensils. Even while he was at home uh, in, in Kilcolman, he wanted to pursue a career in engineering, but his parents had, he, had medicine laid out for him. I think um, an uncle on his mother's side, Maloney, was a doctor, so they decided that that's the career he was going to follow. So, on his, uh, his, his journey via Athlone to Nina, he had decided to... to um, to buy, to buy some land, uh, and um, basically it was considered uh, old Gleason land, and he wanted to buy it back. So 
Can you see the potential in, in at law and, and the need to provide employment? Uh, he decided basically to invest in industrial enterprise rather than in the, the gratification of his sentiment to buy land, as he felt it open up opportunities to help Ireland, which he always had longed to do so. So, um, as Jim Ryan mentioned earlier about the incumbent estates commissioners, uh, the present day NAMA, they had property for sale in Athlone, Boswell's brewery in Athlone, and he bought it in January 1857. Uh, for £180 and he invited his brother-in-law who had the experience of, of working in, 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 in the uh, industrial area in England. So he had hoped that with his money and, and his brother-in-law's skill that they would make a success of a woolen mill. And they had machinery installed, uh, water wheel and other necessary machinery. I think that may be the same photograph as Beatrice had earlier. Uh, that was taken after his death, it was taken in the early 1900s, 1905 or 1906. So, after two or three years, he realized he needed a responsible manager, as his brother-in-law was too busy running his own business back in, 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 in Cheshire, and he wasn't devoting enough of time to at loan. So he, he, he brought two men from Yorkshire, uh, Clayton's were their names, they stayed with him for a short while, but they seen the potential in Ireland, so they just took off and set up another business in Navan. So I often wondered was some of the Navan carpets a continuation of what those people set up. So after six years, the partnership of Gleeson and Simpson was dissolved, and he paid Simpson, his brother-in-law, James Simpson, off with, uh, I think, just 1,500. And at this stage, Dr. Gleeson had sunk considerable amount of money into the business. He decided to concentrate more on the business, so he sold his medical practice and moved to Athlone in 1863. He purchased Hill House in 1864 and the family moved. And by late 1860, things were going quite bad. He had no manager, he had given up his, his practice he had invested all his money. He records uh, that he went to Mass. He implored the help of our Blessed Mother in Heaven and her blessing on all my proceedings. And may our Heavenly Father hear her prayers and mine. Amen. So the man was basically at desperation. He was facing ruin. But in 1867, he wrote to a William Smith of Ross Carberry Moat inviting him to join him. William Smith accepted the position as a full partner and he invested £500 into the business. Things changed for Dr. Gleeson. Uh, his mother-in-law died and his wife inherited uh, a considerable fortune and his wife agreed to invest it in the business. The business went from strength to strength and the partnership between Gleeson and Smith was a winning combination. Tweed, Tweed from the Athlone Woolen Mills won medals at international affairs. Dr. Gleeson travelled the country uh, promoting the product nationwide. Um, it expanded. There was 20, or 66 looms, 12 sets of machinery, 6,000 spindles. It attracted orders from Britain, they made the winter uniforms for the Canadian Mounted Police. Uh, material was exported to, to uh, Australia and New Zealand. It was basically the mainstay of, of Athlone, implying at one stage over 400 people and turning out 14,000 yards of tweed every week, all produced from homegrown wool. So um, the local farmers were, of course, um, delighted with such, such a market in the, uh, so near, buying up to £200,000 of wool per week to meet production quotas, that's weight-wise. As I said earlier, his products won, won medals at Cork and Dublin textile exhibitions, um, just as his daughter Evelyn um, won several awards as well later. This is just an idea of some of the workforce 
Uh, many young people and ladies got, got employment in an area where employment was, opportunities were not great. Um, those are some of, of the business cards uh, you'll see there at least in Smith and Co. at Lone Mullen Mills. He was appointed a Justice of the Peace in Westmead and he bought, uh, in 1884, he bought Benown House in Glasson. The Irish Times wrote of Dr. Edward Leeson, unlike most men and women of his position at the time, uh, of his position at that time was deeply interested in everything connected with Ireland, antiquities, language and music, as well as industrial projects. He seemed too to have been a man with ideas far ahead of his time. For to the scorn of all his friends, he used to talk of harebrained schemes by which the Shannon could be used as a source of electrical power, and the bogs of Ireland turned into a centre of rich fuel, a rich fuel industry. Among his other accomplishments, he played the fiddle quite well, possessed a manuscript, a music book filled with Irish tunes that he had collected, the titles neatly written in both Irish and English. He was also something of a craftsman, once exhibiting a brass clock which he had constructed. So he was a man ahead of his time uh, when he mentioned harnessing the Shannon for electrical power, which happened eventually at Arna Crusher here in, 18, or in 1929, and turning the bogs of Ireland into a, a centre of fuel production, which bore Namona and Sean Lee Mass as Minister for Industry in, in the 30s and the 40s. So Dr. Gleeson from Kilcolman was the man ahead of his time. That is a photograph of uh, the, the family home and the steps leading up to it in Banown. That is Dr. Gleeson in old age. You see him there sitting on the steps, possibly his wife standing behind him, some maybe members of the family. You'll see Evelyn Gleeson there seated, second, uh, she's over here. His eldest son, as we already mentioned, was killed. Uh, it was a great loss to him in Burma. He was in, in, in the civil service. Uh, his camp was attacked one night and he was slaughtered. In, in 1887, Dr. Gleason retired from the mill and handed it over to his son, Gerald who took over as a partner with William Smith. And Gerald, after the death of his father, he sold Benown House and purchased Tinerana House outside Killaloo. Like most people around here in this area would be aware of the Gleasons of Tinerana, but that's all they knew. They often asked me, where did the Gleasons of Tinerana originate? So I've taken you through the, the family history right back from the late 1700s. So they started out in Kilcolman. That is Tinerana House taken a few years ago. It's only part of it actually, it's, it's a much bigger house. The camera wasn't able to get it all in. So quite, they purchased quite an extensive property. It was belonging to a family called Purden before that. So Dr. Edward Maloney, born at Kilcolman, Nina, died at his residence, Benown House on the 27th of August 1895, and he's buried in the local cemetery, far from his own native North Tipperary. He is still remembered in Athlone, Gleason Street, bears his name. He's not in Nina, he's in Athlone. As we mentioned last night, honouring Dermot Gleason, it's time he was honoured here in Nina, his hometown. But I'm um, delighted to say that the name Gleason appears in that loan. So thanks very much. It's just a brief, um, it's just a brief uh, rundown on Dr. Gleason's life. There's a lot more, a lot of uh, papers held in Trinity and the National Library, papers belonging to his daughter Evelyn. It would take you weeks to go through them all. They're very interesting. So many thanks to, to the various people that helped me, Patrick Kelly, his brother, Tom and other people who assisted me with the family history. So thanks very much. Thank you very much, Michael.
Uh, questions for Michael? We have a question down here from David. Let me come down to you. There we go. Hi, uh, Michael. Uh, the family tree showed uh, uh, Michael Gleason's mother was a uh, Maloney. Is that right? Correct. Uh, from Bally Cahan. Bally Cahan in Limerick. That's what the headstone says. And do you, have you done any research on the Maloney? No. And it's my next port of call because, as I said, my great grandmother was Margaret Maloney, spelt the same way M O L O N Y, married to Matthew Gleason. And um, Dr. Gleason's sister there, um, Nora, or Hanora, as she's referred to there, she used to write to, to my great granduncle in America, James Maloney. And she re always referred to him as my dear cousin. And um, no, I haven't gone into that area yet. I see a book down there. I hope they're not all gone. I meant to buy it. Is he gone? Jim Ryan, Tracing Your Limerick Ancestors. But I haven't got to the local resources in Limerick yet, but I will. Um, I know there was a priest in it. Um, I think Margaret Maloney may have had, a, 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 she definitely had a brother, a priest. Uh, Patrick Kelly tells me that um, she had an uncle, a doctor. Um, no, I have no knowledge of, of, of um, the Maloney family other than starting there with what you see up there. Yeah. Now, that, the wedding ring from the parents' marriage uh, of the 92nd, 1792, is in possession of another member of the family, a descendant of Patrick Gleason there. Uh, Patrick's, um, I don't know, his great-granddaughter possibly, Hilda O'Connell in Dundrum, in Taney Road in Dundrum, she has the wedding ring from, with, with that date ma uh, marked on it, I think. Yeah, I'm looking for uh, a Catherine Maloney, spelled that way, um, born in the 1790s, who also married his Patrick, who is my ancestor. I honestly don't know, David. Um, uh, if you, if you find oh, certainly. Uh, can, can Patrick help in any way? Well, the good <laughs> news is that Michael has done a DNA test. So Michael's done a DNA test already. So um, maybe the two of you can check your matches to see if you figure they're amongst each other. So that could be another way of proving that there's possibly a connection there on either the Gleason side or the Maloney side. Yeah. They were obviously a wealthy family because you see the considerable wealth that came with them and the education that their family got, like a doctor, uh, a priest, a businessman. Um, there was considerable wealth there all the time. Other questions or comments? Patrick, Patrick, here. There you go. I was wondering how I could draw attention to a rather interesting little known fact. That it was thanks to Dr. Gleason setting up the, the woman there uh, that John McCormack happened to be born in Athlone because his father, uh, who was a Scotsman and was in the woolen milling business in Scotland, was recruited to come to Athlone as a foreman in the, the Athlone woolen mills, and that's why there's a connection between uh, John McCormack and yeah. Athlone. At, at Although his mother was uh, an Athlone major, she had been living in Scotland. So without the there would be no association for John McCormick. That's correct. I, I came across that in Evelyn's papers about, about, about um, John McCormick's father, yes. And a man called Gerard O'Brien from Athlone Library wrote an article also and he mentions that. Thanks, Patrick. So I think... Any other questions or comments? No, I think no, well, can people are getting tired. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. We'll crack on. Hmm. We'll crack on now with the last presentation of the evening, and that's Mike's. Uh, that's uh, sorry, no, it's the second last actually. It'll be Brian, um, and we're going to play a little.